Today we'll be delving into some philosophical questions like, is it stealing if you sneak into a vet and you uh, at night break down the door and take a dog out of it? Is that stealing or is it adopting? Hey guys, this is Mar Wright from Marvel's Dog Training. Back again, and today we're gonna do something that's kind of fun, I like doing it, it's one of my favorite things, and that is answering the questions that you guys have sent to us via YouTube or via Twitter. Remember, you could always send questions to us at hashtag AskArgos on Twitter. You could also just drop a comment in any of the videos and we go through, we read all the comments, we make note of all the questions and then we go back and we answer them. So today's episode is about answering questions um, that has been left to us since our last Ask Argos episode. So the first question is for, from Shanidi Parthaban, and it says, how to train a four-year-old Labrador to stop pulling? Um, and all right, that is actually a pretty tricky question. Um, a lot of these things, like saying it in words, is not going to get to the essence of what it is. Um, a lot of times with my clients, I have to show them, and many times I have to show them repeatedly how to stop the dog from pulling. Um, a dog pulls because they walk at a different pace than we do. A dog pulls because they're curious of the world and they're natural scavengers, right? Um, their social distancing is different than ours. Their, their range where they're with you is much bigger than our range when we're with them, right? Anybody outside of 10 feet from us, we're not really with them. Um, while a dog, anybody outside of 200 feet, they're not really with them, you know? so. Uh, that is the part of the reason why they pull. The way that I deal with pulling is by increasing engagement between the human and the dog. Um, so what I do, what we generally do is we teach games to the dog and to the human. We, we make up little games and little tricks and little techniques in order to get the dog to want to pay attention to the human and want to be next to the human. When a dog pulls hard on the leash away from me, the dog is trying to escape me. Right, And the only reason why the dog doesn't escape me is because the leash is there and there's the sensation of pulling. As we're teaching dogs how to communicate through the leash, we teach them that tension on the leash means that we're in disagreement. So that's a part of it as well. But the main part is in to engage the dog's mind, to make the walking interesting for them, to make games for them, to do on the walk so that way they want to pay attention to you. Okay, the second question, whoa, here it is, is from Ice. That's an easy name to pronounce. Um, I live in the Middle East. I don't know what to do about my dog walking on hot asphalt in the summer. What do I do about that? So he's referring to a video or episode we shot about um, Boston weather and the cold and dealing with the salt. Um, I'm going to shoot a video about hot asphalt because we get that too around July, August. Even a few days ago in May, it was pretty hot and there was hot asphalt. Um, so we are going to shoot an episode about that. Um, for the meantime, a lot of the same things that you do with the salt, you could do with the heat. Um, at least one main thing, I should say. The boots. The boots do work. Um, so. In order to make sure that you watch the next video, I'm not going to go much into it, but I have a lot of ideas about that too. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll try to shoot that very soon, as soon as the pavement heats up a little bit around here. All right? Okay, this is the third question. It comes from Priscilla. Um, she has written questions before, and I really appreciate her watching the videos and asking questions. I appreciate every one of these questions. They're great. So definitely keep watching. Hashtag Ask Argos on Twitter, and we'll find them there too. Um, okay, so the question is, I think it comes from um, an episode that we shot called Consulting with First Time Puppy Owner, Part 2. And Priscilla's question is, oops, exclamation point. I, have made, I made a mistake by not putting him in a crate for three to six hours a day. Can I fix this or should I fix this? All right, so that's the question. Um, now, I know Priscilla, I know her dog. Um, 
I recommended at that time that we use three to six hours a day for our dog to be in, our puppies to be in the crate, um, mainly because, you know, it was during the middle of COVID and everybody was at home. Um, and the dogs started, will start to get used to that, never leaving their owners. And it's a good way to like control spacing and things like that. Yes, I do believe that young dogs should be in the crate a lot of the time during the day. I don't mean that they should be in there all the time, but like blocks of time, two to three to six hours is good. And you could break it down in one hour blocks, three one hour blocks. You could break it down in three two hour blocks. You could break it down in two one hour and a half blocks. It doesn't really matter. Um, the structure and the routine of being in the crate at the same time will help the dog. Um, even so, the question here is, um, can I fix it? or should I fix it? For her dog at this age, yes, she should fix it, and yes, she can fix it. Um, basically, I would recommend that she goes back and she checks out the episodes on crate training. Even with the older dog, those episodes work great. Those skills, those things that we do work great, even with senior dogs. You know, um, her dog is probably eight to 10 months old now, um, so definitely will work with that dog as well. Go back, check those things out. Um, and then start putting your dog in the crate more and more until you get up to that three to six hours. I would recommend that when my dogs are young, I use the crate a lot. If you watch the Larry Chrome video that we made, um, he does the same thing. And I could probably get a list of trainers um, that's very long that um, agree with that. Generally, the rule of thumb is for the first year, the dog sleeps in the crate at night. And for the first two years, we leave the dog alone in the crate whenever we leave the house. Um, for the first two years, whenever I'm not watching the dog or interacting with the dog, then they're in the crate. In other words, if I'm not training, if I'm not playing with the dog, if I'm not cuddling on the floor with the dog, if I'm not walking the dog, if I'm not um, playing with the dog, is there anything else? Bathing the dog, grooming the dog, um, they are in the crate, all right? So if I'm not interacting with the dog where my attention is on the dog for the first two years, I leave them in the crate. It's worked great for me. It's worked great for a lot of my friends. It works great for a lot of service dog trainers. It works great for a lot of uh, people who have dogs, you know, that they train for jobs. Um, it works great in general. And one of the big problems, the reason why we see so many problems with pet dogs is because that part of the development is often ignored and people feel like they're being mean to their dogs, which they're not. All right, so this is question number four. This one comes from someone named Oshi. Um, if I mispronounced it, I'm sorry. I really did search how to pronounce it and it came up with Oishi, I guess. And that, I guess, means delicious. Um, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, but anyway, your question is, your perspective is refreshing. Want to be YouTube friends? Question mark. Um, I am not sure what exactly that means. Uh, I believe you do have a channel and I think that it means subscribe, you know, you subscribe to my channel, I subscribe to your channel and I think that would be great. Um, I'll put Frank right on it. He will check, he's a tech guy. So if there's a way that we could be even more intimate friends on YouTube, then we will figure it out. Um, of course, definitely drop some comments below if you want to clarify what you mean. And uh, yeah, I think that's that. Moving on. Corero. 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 All right, I think I got it. All right, this is question number five. Maybe six? I don't know, man. There's a lot of questions, but I like them. Keep sending your questions. This one's from Corero Corero. I hope I pronounced that right. The question is, when is it too late to get your dog into playing with toys? Um, I wrote back to this question um, because I want you to start playing with your dog right away. It's never too late to get your dog playing with toys. Dogs like people play all the way through their lives. Old dogs play, young dogs play, all dogs play. The only way a dog will not play is if they are a little bit anxious or a little bit nervous. Um, if they don't know you or if they don't trust you, then they won't play with you right away. Um, our pet dog should be able to play with us at a drop of a hat. 
you know, at any reason. As soon as I get goofy and I get silly, my dogs see it and they're ready to play. Um, whether it's with toys or it's personal play um, with hands and things like that, or it's food play, as soon as I get silly, the dog is ready to play. And I hope that you're able to achieve that with your dog as well. Start right away, start today. And um, get playing as a part of your dog's life. It is very important for your development and your bonding with your dog, no matter how old they are. Okay, this video, this uh, question, question number six, is from the video Dog Trainer Reacts to John Wick Stealing a Pitbull, part two. I guess there's two parts made to this one, um, but this is part two. And the question is from Progressive Libertarian. I could pronounce that name. That's pretty good. Thank you for even having the easy name that I could pronounce. Um, all right, so the question is stealing, question mark. Do you mean adopting slash rescuing? That dog could have been put down. That was a that was a humane society. P.S. Was the dog a bully or a Amstaff? All right. So <clears throat> stealing. Um, so I guess this person is asking if it was really stealing when John Wick took the dog from the um, from the humane society or the vet when uh, he was after he stapled himself up. And he didn't bother to clean the wound any at all, well at all. He just stapled, put staples in, and then he stole the dog. Um, was that stealing or was it adopting slash rescuing? In my opinion, that was theft um, because he did not fill out any paperwork and he did not tell anybody that he was taking the dog. He broke into the space. Um, he, he, no one was there. He broke in when no one was there. Um, he did not pay any adoption fees, which you don't necessarily have to pay adoption fees, but you have to do the paperwork, you know, and you have to let somebody know that you're removing a dog and that, or they should give you the dog, really, you know. But if you break a lock and you go into a place that is locked and you remove an item from it or a dog from it, that's stealing. Anyway, um, moving on. The next question is, was it a bully or an Amstaff? And that is a tricky question because the dog is so young. I looked at the dog's face. Um, I seen a lot of Amstaffs that look like that. Um, but bullies and Amstaffs, they look a lot alike. You know, I can't tell. It's a possibility that it could be a mix of both, you know, or it could be like any of the pit bull breeds could be mixed in there. Um, because you have the M staff, you have the American Staffordshire Terrier. Sometimes they consider the American Bulldog as a pit bull. You have the American Bully. You know, all of these could have been mixed together. It could have been definitely all four of those, plus a little Dalm Dalmatian, and we would not know. So I don't know. That's the answer. I do not know. But if you know, or if you have a guess, I would love to hear it. Or if anybody has a guess, guess as to what exact breed that was, I would love to hear it. Um, I also searched it online and they said it could be a mix. Um, if the producers of the John Wick, if you guys know, or if there's a DNA test done, I would love to have access to that information. So definitely write to us. You can find us at Argos Dog Training or argostraining.com. You could also find us on this YouTube channel because here you are now, right? So that is the whole thing. I believe that's all of our questions. If you like what you've seen here today, then definitely subscribe to our channel. Um, give us good reviews, you know, hit the notification bell. Do all that you can to help us out so that way we could continue to produce these videos for you. Check us out on Facebook as well and Instagram. And until the next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog.